A very good evening and a warm welcome to State of Business on Art Television. I'm Mariam Vijay Ratna. Let's have a look at the headlines first. Central Bank eases standing facilities restrictions for licensed commercial banks. Government revenue in January exceeds expectations, State Minister reveals. News in detail. The Monetary Policy Board of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka has announced significant changes affecting licensed commercial banks and open market operations. Restrictions on standing facilities have been eased by the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, effective from the 16th of February. The CBSL has lifted the restriction on the standing lending facility entirely, while the limit on accessing the standing deposit facility has been relaxed from 5 to 10 times per calendar month. These changes come after careful assessment by the CBSL following measures introduced last January, aimed at reducing banks' reliance on overnight facilities and revitalizing the domestic money market. Analysts are already weighing in, citing benefits for cash flow management and increased reassurance for banks. The relaxation of restrictions on standing facilities is expected to facilitate downward adjustment in market interest rates, aligning with the central bank's overall money policy direction. State Finance Minister Ranjit Siambala Pitya disclosed that government revenue in January has surpassed expectations by 25%. He cited increased VAT contributions and expanded coverage as key drivers of this increase in government revenue, speaking in Parliament yesterday. The Customs Department led the charge, surpassing its target of 114 billion rupees, with collections totaling to 121 billion rupees, marking an impressive 11% increase. Similarly, the Exercise Department exceeded expectations, reporting revenue of 14 billion rupees against a target of 12 billion rupees. Meanwhile, the Inland Revenue Department recorded collections of 114 billion rupees, surpassing its set target of 88.9 billion rupees, showcasing robust revenue performance across departments. Despite concerns over inflation, Post, the VAT rate hike from 15% to 18% January saw a manageable inflation rate of 6.4%. Minister Siambala Pitya attributed this to the prudent exemption of essential commodities from VAT maintaining food inflation at a low 3.3% while non-food inflation stood at 7.9%. Addressing speculations of price hikes following the VAT adjustment, Minister Siambala Pitya reassured the public, highlighting the government's success in managing inflationary pressures. Minister Siambala Pitya emphasized that this surge will significantly contribute to the welfare of citizens nationwide, underscoring the government's commitment to fiscal stability and socio-economic progress. Tourism Minister Fernando announced that the Sri Lanka Tourism Promotion Bureau is set to launch a global marketing campaign next month titled Sri Lanka You'll Come Back for More, marking the end of a 15-year hiatus. The minister made this revelation speaking at the parliamentary session yesterday. With a budget of 1.2 billion rupees allocated until August, the campaign will target 11 strategic markets worldwide, aiming to capitalize on Sri Lanka's allure as a destination of choice. The campaign rooted inside revealing that over 30% of tourists are repeat travellers aimed to position Sri Lanka as a premier tourism hotspot. Highlighting the island's picturesque landscapes, Minister Fernando underscored its potential as a sought-after location from film tourism. He said that the SLTB is working to establish a single window mechanism aiming for expedited approvals within seven days for TV commercials and two weeks for films to be made in Sri Lanka. However, Minister Fernando cautioned against a potential shortage of hotel rooms, urging the empowerment of youth to addressing emerging challenges and seize opportunities in the sector. Sri Lanka's tourism vision extends to drawing 2.3 million tourists and earning over $4 billion in 2024, with long-term goals aiming for 5 million arrivals and $21.6 billion in revenue by 2030. Stay tuned, we'll be right back after this short commercial break.
Welcome back after the break. In a bid to safeguard Sri Lanka's democracy, key civil society leaders convened for a discussion on electoral integrity, urging active citizenship and demanding integrity from candidates in Colombo recently. The panel discussion was organized by the Center for Investigative Reporting Sri Lanka. At the panel discussion titled, Making Elections Work for the People, Role of Civil Society, four influential figures shared their insights. Dr. Vinya Aryaratna of Sarvode Shramadana Movement underscored the importance of public trust in representative amid social political crisis, emphasizing the need for free and fair polls visible to all. Nadishani Pereira of Transparency International Sri Lanka stressed citizen-driven efforts against political corruption, urging public accountability to combat state capture. Rohan Heti Arachi from People's Action for Free and Fair Elections highlighted the voters' responsibility to elect candidates with integrity and democratic values. Kanaka Begunawardhana discussed the underrepresentation of women in politics, shedding light on the challenges faced despite women constituting a significant portion of registered voters. Moderated by Dilrukshi Handunetti of CIR, the discussion saw participation from journalists, civil society members, and agencies and senior officials. Chairman of Pan Asia Bank Corporation Aravind Pereira said that experimentation, testing, adequate research, and flexibility are all vital ingredients in that should be included in a successful entrepreneur. Aravind Pereira said, marking the keynote speech at an event hosted by the Institute of Engineers Sri Lanka in Colombo on Wednesday. The event was themed leveraging engineering to successful entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship. Entrepreneur is willing to experiment. Each new opportunity, he must run tests. This is something we engineers all very clear. No? You have an opportunity, you have a product, or you are a service, then you test. Then check whether it's worthwhile to pursue. Idea for a new product or service, if it fulfills an un underserved demand, it is not unserved only. Underserved demand is also something that you can look at. You need to do your market research and then validate your idea. When I say market research, I'm not talking about calling a, a consultant company and asking, to, no, do it your own. Adaptability is another serious character that I, one should look at if you want to be an entrepreneur. Because it's an interactive process, new challenges and opportunities at every turn. You can't be pre-prepared for every scenario. So you adapt. In other words, you have situations, so many situations, you have to evaluate your situations and remain flexible, keep business forward. No matter what the expected changes are, you keep on adapting yourself. Speaking at the event, Aravind Pera said that good risk tolerance and persistence in the face of consistent failure is required to ensure long-term success of entrepreneurial endeavors. Risk tolerance. Starting a new business is an exciting journey. But there's nothing that doesn't have risk. You have to start living with risk. You always try to minimize because risk finally determines rewards. Very low risk project will give you very low rewards. Very high risk project will give you better. Your trick is to balance it. Always try to balance it. Always try to balance it. You need to know your risk capital. How much money can you lose and get out? If you are an entrepreneur, you must be ready to accept failure. Uh, Harvard says 70% of startups will grow in the first two years. They will, half of them will last for five years. A quarter will only last after 15 years. 100, only 25 will be still surviving after 15 years. Reasons to fail, lack of business scalability. You are small, there's no way of expanding it. Stay tuned, we'll be right back with the stock updates.
Welcome back after the break. Trading at Columbus Stock Exchange ended on a positive note today. The All Share Price Index gained 20.00 points to close at 10,567.33 and the S&P SL20 gained 11.61 points to close at 3,026.77. The turnover was 0.7 billion rupees and over 22 million shares were traded. Up next are Forex Rates. That's all we have for tonight. For this and more, subscribe to our channel on YouTube and follow us on Facebook. 